Dave, the chair of the Director Center for Shaker 19. <laughs> 916. Um, basically, what this bill does is the Missouri Human Rights Act uh, is that of an employer. There's been an exemption in the law for the Missouri Human Rights Act for religious organizations. What's happened is um, the Human Rights Commission has promulgated the rule, and then uh, in 2013, there was a Missouri Supreme Court case dealing with that rule and further definition which really ratchets down the definition of a religious organization as being exempt from the law. And so what this bill is an attempt to do is clarify. And, you know, I, I know this, this bill's been presented as an LGBT issue. That's currently not something that's protected under the Missouri Human Rights Act. I guess someday in the future it could be. But that's really not the issue here. The issue is overall whether or not uh, employment laws in some way interfere with religious organizations uh, help deeply held religious beliefs. And so when we've seen some of the things that have come out of the Supreme Court recently, changing the law in the United States and in the state of Missouri, you know, this is where the rubber hits the road if you're a religious organization. This, this is whether or not in the First Amendment you have the ability to practice your religion without government interference or not. And so what this attempts to do is redefine the definition of employer to make sure that the exemption for religious organizations that was originally in this bill and has always been is truly interpreted by the courts and, and employers and employees as being an exemption. Um, I've worked with Professor Esbeck on this bill. He's here. Uh, he'll be the first witness. You know, I'm, I'm open to discussion on this bill of what ultimately the language looks like. But that is the purpose of the bill. And I think we need to make sure that as we are in kind of this new frontier of defining religious liberty in context of more recent court decisions, you know, we have to make sure as the Missouri legislature that religious organizations are protected and that their deeply held religious beliefs are not interfered with unnecessarily by the government. That's, that's what this bill is about. It's the forefront and it's where the rubber meets the road on this issue. And we're going to have to de de define where that line is. So again, um, you know, Professor Esbeck can testify uh, as to certain things here in the language much better than I can. But I think we ultimately will have to determine what did that exemption mean when you put it in there uh, originally, and what's it going to be in the future? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions for the sponsor? Senator Kevin. Thank you. Chair Whitman, the way you explained it, the court uh, narrowly uh, construed a rule that was promulgated by the commission. Yeah, so the commission promulgated a rule that basically said to be a exempt religious organization, there's a couple things that have to take place, including the entity has to be owned and operated by a religious group, and then every member of that organization has to be an adherent or a member of that religious organization. So number one, that was the narrowing down by the Human Rights Commission, but then on top of that, the court went into that prong of ownership that's in the rule, right. and said because the hospital, the religious hospital that was in, in, in question there, St. Francis Medical Center, was in fact owned by a C4. The court said a C4 can't own anything. So in fact, it wasn't owned by anybody apparently, and therefore the rule was not flipped. And that's, you know, I, I don't agree with that. I think that's a stretch. But that's the kind of thing that we're gonna have to define, I think, to make sure we have clarity so that there is sufficient protection for religious liberty. I mean, I, I was trying to get you to uh, comment on why not just rewrite the rule. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's face it, the rule, the rule is an executive branch, under an executive branch you know, yeah. agency, and they may have a different view than we have, and I think that it's our role as the legislature to articulate what we intended to do with the exemption of the original statute, and not leave it to an executive branch agency to somehow find it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. You want to call your first? Yeah, you call the test aspect, please. That's true. Welcome, sir. Uh, good afternoon. For the record, uh, Carl Hesbeck. I'm a member of the faculty of the University of Missouri. Uh, my title there is uh, uh, Professor of Law Emeritus, and I like to teach in the area of interstate relations, constitutional law, federal civil rights uh, litigation. Uh, as Senator Colbert said, we got um, just recently from the Missouri Supreme Court uh, somewhat of a technical reading, and it was a reading not just of uh, the Commission's regulation, but of the statute itself. The statute passed by this body back in the 1970s, and the statute, the Supreme Court said, was defective because it required, in order to enjoy the religious exemption, you had to be owned and operated. Well, the court said it's impossible 
to own a nonprofit corporation. Nobody owns it. A for-profit, of course, is owned by the shareholders, but a nonprofit isn't owned, <clears throat> isn't owned by anybody. So, in essence, the, uh, the religious exemption evaporated completely. In doing that, they overturned a 31-year-old precedent, which had uh, interpreted that very same language much more generously. So we have a, a, a you know a technical reading, and in essence, the, the Missouri Supreme Court has pushed the ball back to your court to uh, to fix this particular religious uh, uh, exemption. But let me just uh, pause. Other witnesses uh, who actually represent religious organizations can testify to this better than me. But we have kind of an absurd. Uh, all 50 states, minus one now, minus Missouri, exempts religious organizations to some extent from their human rights act. So we have this kind of a absurd situation that a church can't say, in order to be a secretary of a church, you have to be a member of the church. That's absurd. If, if you want to run a, a, a Lutheran K-12 school, you can't require them to teach you to be Lutheran. That's kind of a absurd result that we have right now. So we obviously have to put something back in its particular place. So in order to, to be a religious organization, you have to hold yourself out to the public as religious. You also have to have a religious purpose, and you have to engage in religious activities. All of those are the hoops that you need to jump through. Also in that uh, uh, the bill's definition of religious organization, it deals with a difference in polity or ecclesiology, which is uh, different between Catholic and Protestant. If you're Catholic, um, all of the pertinent schools and, and ancillary social service organizations, Catholic charities and so on, are all tied into the church in some way. But in Protestantism, it's quite common to have a holy religious ministry, but it's freestanding. It's not captive of any church or denomination. Uh, that's very common among uh, uh, Protestant Christian schools. For example, uh, the uh, College of the Ozarks down in the, in the Southwest uh, is, is quite religious, but it isn't associated with any denomination. Uh, and, and so, so the definition saying, well, you don't have to have this connection or relation to uh, deals with and, and brings those Protestant groups within in that particular definition, all of which is to say this corporation has. <coughs> Sorry, we have to go to questions to be consistent here. Any questions for the professor? I do have one. Um, can you can you give us? I, I certainly see where what you lay out here before. So we're the only state you now as a result of this decision, and, and it wasn't a. Per se, a lawsuit it was an administrative rule change. I understand you said that. <laughs> there, were two went the lawsuit. there were two things. The commission had an administrative rule that actually read the statute over the narrow. But the court based its decision on two points separately. And, and the one that you have to deal with is they said, look, put aside what the commission said. The, the General Assembly back in the 70s said, in order to get this exemption, you had to be owned and operated by a religious group. And it is impossible, says the Missouri Supreme Court, to be a, for a nonprofit organization to be owned by anybody. So there you are. So my other question, and that, that, that kind of explains it. Um, my other question is, can you give us and I'm, I hesitate to ask for this because it is, I know it can't really be um, refined perhaps since the time that we have, but historically you do touch on uh, the differences there um, pertaining to Catholic tradition versus Protestant tradition. But are there more, um, how can this? Can you give us just kind of a summary of historically why we find ourselves in this place um, with regard to kind of a merging of church and state, if you will? I mean, my word, we have a few of the church in 
authority over the church, perhaps. Any church. Well, you know, in a country that has celebrated the separation of church and state, how are we here? Aside from the court case, I mean, um, it just seems ironic that we're having this discussion. Well, back in the 1970s, and late 1960s as well, the states were passing human rights acts. Um, they were defining what, who, who was an employer subject to the act. And naturally, religious groups came forward for reasons of separation of church and state, which you correctly identified and said, well, we, we too are employers, but you don't want to regulate us for reasons of separation of church and state. And because it's obviously a religious liberty problem if you're telling a Lutheran school you can't just hire Lutheran teachers. That's, that's a major, rather obvious uh, uh, religious uh, problem. So they exempted religious organizations. And that was just fine in Missouri with a precedent that stood uh, well for 31 years, but the Supreme Court recently rejected that precedent and, said, no, we're going to read this statute literally, which technically was infected. It is true. Nobody owns a nonprofit organization. So, so in essence, that technicality, that language, which has been there for 45 years, was effective. The Supreme Court wasn't going to give you a pass. The ball's back in your court. I would hope that you again honor separation of church and state. And, Put back in a uh, you know a reasonable uh, religious organization exemption. Any questions? Any further questions for the professor? Thank you, sir. I would like to ask for a show of hands. How many intend to testify in support of this bill? How many intend to testify in opposition? Okay. I think what we're going to do is. Uh, just a little bit from our um, standard procedure here, and we'll take testimony in an alternating fashion. So I'll now call for uh, anyone that would like to testify in opposition. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, uh, committee members, I'm Eric Kriegel. I'm with the Missouri Commission on Human Rights. And the uh, commission is uh, testifying against this bill because it feels that it could jeopardize our receipt of federal funds from the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC. And we're able to contract with the EEOC because they have analyzed the Missouri Human Rights Act and determined that it is substantially equivalent with the federal civil rights laws that the EEOC enforces. And when they reviewed um, Senate Bill 916, they had some concerns that uh, it would make the exception much broader than the religious exception, say, in Title VII of the ADA. And that could threaten our ability to contract with the EEOC. And we received a you know, substantial portion of our budget from the EEOC, uh, $760,000. So I'm um, the testimony earlier was that there are 49 states that have religious exemptions to their human rights statutes, and you did just allude yourself to the Title IX religious exceptions. Have you worked with the bill sponsor to craft a, uh, a, 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 a religious exemption that would not be problematic? Um, I have not, sir. I do have a letter from the EOC um, outlining their concerns that I've attached to my witness um, form. Okay. I have just one question. We have, uh, my time in the Senate, at least, we have had a number of bills dealing with the Human Rights, Missouri Human Rights Act. Many of them actually dealt with business uh, related topics. And I believe that the Commission has come on a number of occasions and made that same argument. Are you aware of any legislation that has sought to alter the Missouri Human Rights Act? Were you all not testified, or were you testified in favor? Um, not off the top of my head. Um, 
we when we get feedback from the EEOC or from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, we have concerns about the, the legislation that could impact our ability to contract and receive the federal funds. We can testify to that effect. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Oh, Mr. And I have seen the EEOC letter. There's no suggestions on how to make the bill better. It's just we don't like the bill. But I'd be happy to share with the uh, entire committee. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will now take a witness and support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Lance Kinzer. I'm the policy director for the group called the First Amendment Partnership, the national group that works with some of the nation's largest state communities on issues of common concern related to the issue of religious liberty. I just want to make a, a couple of points. The reason we're here today is because of some points that have already been made, which is to say that this chair uh, of the St. Francis Medical Center opinion that was issued by the Missouri Supreme Court. Uh, is, a, at least in our reading, uh, unique and, and, and troubling with respect to the position that leaves the citizens, particularly religious institutions in Missouri, and when compared to similarly situated entities in other states. Uh, our reading of Senate Bill 916 is that it serves really just to restore the pre era status quo while clarifying the extent of the religious exemption with, frankly, I think would be helpful uh, to courts and legal practitioners as they attempt to apply uh, that particular exception. By defining it with more specificity, I think you actually reduce the likelihood of future litigation, which is really important because it goes to a core point that's been made, which is the reason the history of these exemptions for religious groups uh, in civil rights acts at the federal level in state laws with respect to human rights has always related to the understanding that there's something inherently um, unseemly about the state interjecting itself into the hiring practices of religious entities. You know, the United States Supreme Court has recognized repeatedly in a variety of contexts the idea that religious exemptions from civil rights or human rights acts are appropriate and actually further um, and Justice Ginsburg, for example, in the unanimous decision in Cutter v. Wilkerson, which is 544 U.S. 709 for attorneys here, I commend it to your attention, talked about the fact that the court has long recognized that government may accommodate religious practices without violating the establishment clause, and in fact, that those very accommodations work within what she called the, the room for play within the joints of the free exercise clause and the establishment clause in order to further and protect religious liberty. And then Justice White, in another case I commend the committee's attention, presiding bishop, the Amos, which is 483 U.S. 1987, Justice White put even a finer point on it when he said that exemptions of this type serve the important purpose of avoiding undue government entanglement in the hiring practices of religious groups. And what I would note is, took a look at the laws of states like Illinois, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, just some surrounding states, um, and what's clear is that under the Faro opinion, citizens in Missouri, the religious institutions in Missouri, enjoy now much less freedom from entanglement um, than is the case even in surrounding states. And so I think it makes good sense for public policy matter to address this in a legislative context. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thank you for your testimony. Next in opposition. Thank you, uh, Chairman Nixon. My name is Paul Bullman. I'm an attorney in Kansas City. I also went to Catholic school for 13 years. And I understand from Senator Schaefer, who I have met many agreements with, actually, with many on uh, this uh, committee. Um, the issue with this bill is that it excludes religious organizations from anything involving the MHR. It's not about religious liberty when we deal with, for instance, teachers who are sexually active at school. They are no longer protected under state law with this bill. It's not religious liberty when we have students who are sexually active at school. They're not protected under this bill. Under federal law and under the First Amendment, which of course we all have to agree, the First Amendment trumps MHRA, uh, 
there are exceptions and protections for legitimate religious liberties. For instance, uh, Professor Esbeck gave the example of you're a Lutheran school, you should be allowed to hire just Lutherans to teach church doctrine. I have no issue with that. I think that's fair. The issue here, though, that I have, and I'm speaking on behalf of Matt, but more so myself and my past, the issue I have is I don't believe any uh, teacher or student, um, janitor, or anyone else who works at a Catholic school or a Protestant school or any religious school should now not have the same rights as those who are at open government schools. The same applies for hospitals. You know, a nurse or a janitor or a doctor or someone else who works at a religious hospital, which many are, that's where my child was born, a religious hospital, uh, they're no longer protected under the MHR with us either. So now all of a sudden they can be discriminated against. They can be chosen based on their race. They can be sexually harassed. You know, federal law protects, um, in the limited way federal law does, these issues. But now state law would no longer protect that. And that's a major problem. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But this is a, I'm, I'm part, I don't mean to interrupt. I'd be happy to work with Senator Schaefer on trying to craft this in a way that I think addresses the concerns that are being raised that I think are legitimate. And I, I would note that I think I've spoken in front of this committee three times over the last six years on religious liberty issues because I represent people who are denied their religious liberties at work. That's not the entire of my practice. It's a good part of my practice. So for instance, Sunday accommodation, people have been denied it. I've fought for that. So I'm generally pro-religious liberty, but this is not, sexual harassment, race discrimination is not religious liberty. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thank you. My name is George Paul Wood. I am the Religious Freedom Initiatives Coordinator for the General Council of the Assemblies of God, which is headquartered in Springfield, Missouri, and I'm speaking on behalf, obviously, of Senate Bill Number 916. As a rule of thumb, the General Council doesn't comment pro or for or against pending points of legislation. However, we do feel that a fix in the Missouri Human Rights Act is needed for the legal reasons pointed out by Professor Desbeck and also uh, by Lance Kinzer. Um, to give some sense of the uh, Assemblies of God's uh, concerns about that, you need to understand that not only is the Assemblies of God, is the Assemblies of God a denomination, our national office is located in Springfield, Missouri. We have two district councils located in Missouri. Um, so not only can we operate 461 churches with 100,000 adherents in Springfield, Missouri, um, but in addition to which, the General Council of the Assemblies of God owns and operates, uh, or at least we think we own and operate under the law, it's not clear that we do own and operate, two accredited universities. We also own and operate the Assemblies of God Financial Services. Uh, the Assemblies of God Foundation, or any number of ministries uh, that the Assemblies of God operates, which are not local congregations. And if I'm understanding the problem with this, uh, with the Pharaoh decision that it creates for the Assemblies of God and its affiliated entities, uh, it, it means that even those institutions, such as educational institutions, which are owned and operated by the General Council of the Assemblies of God, um, could be sued under. Missouri Human Rights Act for a variety of violations. The previous person who testified, for instance, mentioned twice, what about the student who has sex after school, or the teacher has sex after school. And we actually have sexual conduct codes, both in our employer's contracts and in our student body and employee uh, contracts with our schools that regulate sexual conduct. It's a little bit scary to suggest that maybe that that is not uh, uh, something that we can do legally um, simply because somebody else doesn't consider that fair. Uh, the General Council of the Assemblies of God, all of its entities are voluntary organizations. They are not opposed by anybody. People join will willingly. And when they do join willingly, they also agree to certain sets of documents and conduct codes that govern their behavior. And so given the scope of this problem, potentially, thankfully, nobody has had the the temerity to uh, try to go after church institutions or whatnot. Thankfully, I think everybody understands that that would be a foolish move. Uh, we do think, however, that this law does need to be fixed to clarify that just as uh, um, federal law exempts religious organizations from uh, um, certain uh, 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 
civil rights uh, provisions, uh, the Missouri legislature should also be the same and bring its laws into line with those of the other United States. So again, we speak in favor of this bill. Thank you. George, it's good to see you, sir. Thank you, Senator. Um, you, you certainly effectively raised the flip side of the argument, that is, by not doing this, we would essentially be limiting what we could uh, voluntarily regulate yourselves. Yes. Any questions? We will now take the witness in opposition. Uh, good afternoon, Senators. For the record, Sarah Rossi with the ACLU of Missouri. We are here in opposition to the bill. I'm also representing Promo today, who couldn't be here in person. They're also in opposition to the bill. And I also have written testimony from the NAACP of Missouri, who couldn't be here in person, who's also in opposition to the bill. We can accept your testimony for the record. Those that are not here, since they were not here to answer questions, I cannot listen to the witness. I will distribute to It's not for me to free to know that they're out. Okay. <laughs> Just so we're good. For um, everyone who's our opposition to the bill is very similar to Matt's opposition. I agree that there should be a reasonable definition in the Missouri Human Rights Act for the religious exemption. Um, in a previous hearing and this hearing, I'll say again, yeah, we agree that um, clergy and churches should have an exemption from certain laws so that their religious liberties are protected. We feel that's the purpose of the First Amendment. Our issue with this particular definition of employer in the Missouri Human Rights Act is that it's very, very broad. And it will allow any number of organizations to discriminate based on things like race and gender with absolutely no liability or liability for those actions. Um, for example, just as I was sitting back there, I was thinking about organizations who could be religiously affiliated or may not be religiously affiliated, but consider themselves to be religious in nature, like women's shelters, daycares, thrift stores, homeless shelters, preschools, hospitals, hospice care, nursing homes, independent living centers, adoption services, foster care placement. All of those things could be religiously affiliated, but could just be independent organizations or nonprofits that are operating and want to operate a specific way and that could be discriminating discriminating against people who are discriminating against women etc and then decide to hold themselves out to be religious in the community and say that their services are religious in nature because if they're offering social services i think there's an argument to be there my issue with the definition specifically is that it doesn't just cover organizations that are religiously affiliated it covers all of these different types of social services, including the ones I, I would say, including the ones I listed, whether or not connected to or affiliated with a church convention, denomination, or other organization with churches, and then basically says they can just hold themselves out to be in whole or in part religious and be exempted from the Missouri Human Rights Act. So that's what worries me, is that there does need to be a definition. I agree with Senator Schaefer on that, but the definition needs to be narrow enough that we're not encouraging organizations to hold themselves out to be religious and we're going to discriminate on the basis of race or gender or disability or any other number of things. To address the Senator's concern that the LGBT community is um, raising awareness about this bill, we're fully confident that at some point LGBT people will be included in the Human Rights Act and when that day comes we prefer that they not be discriminated against uh, to this level. So that's why the, the alarm has been raised in that. Okay. Any questions for Sarah? Thank you. Oh, Senator, I'm sorry. Sorry, um, this is, I, I guess you came up here wearing three hats, so I'm going to ask you a question for your oh, Do you have any final? I know that we've taken up language at different times in the past about um, adding LGBT to uh, protect the United States under the Missouri Human Rights Act. Is that the sort of thing that Paul might want to see happen with a vehicle like this potentially? Um, I think Paul would like to see LGBT people added to the Missouri Human Rights Act. Part one, I'm not sure that this. Tell me what you mean by that. I mean, I'm, I'm, are you saying in conjunction with something like this? Right, right, yeah. Um, we wouldn't be willing to weaken the protections for crews who are already protected. Well, well certainly not. No, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. Mm -hmm. I'm just suggesting, I mean, like legislation would say you can't be fired for being gay. Would that be? That would be delightful. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other 
questions? Thank you. <coughs> we will now take a witness in support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's a privilege to be able to speak to the committee today. My name is Don Hinkle. I'm the Director of Public Policy for the largest non Catholic denomination in the state of Missouri. The 2,000 churches and the 650,000 members of the Missouri Baptist Convention. I'm just here today to express our support for this big six months. Thank you. Any questions for Don? Thanks, in opposition. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the committee. Thank you for Empower Missouri. I'm not sure that we have anything to do to add. It hasn't been said already, but we'd like you on record in opposition. Good questions, Mr. Thank you. Next in support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the committee members. My name is Michael Whitehead. I'm an attorney in private law practice in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I'm here today on behalf of the Missouri Baptist Convention. He's one of my clients, and I'm the general counsel for the convention. So I've been practicing law generally for just about a little bit over now, 40 years. I thought this morning as I left the Capitol Plaza Hotel and saw down in the lobby hundreds of young law students taking the Missouri bar today. And I wanted to say a word of prayer for them. They have no idea what they're getting into. Uh, but I also thought about this bill. If they were given a copy of this statute as one of their essay exams and said, interpret and analyze this statute, that to be a, an exempt employer in Missouri, you must be a religious organization that's, uh, or a, if you're a nonprofit corporation, you must be owned and operated by a religious denomination, convention association, etc. I think they would all miss that question. Uh, and the legislature missed the answer to that question when in your collective wisdom you passed this law and then you were graded harshly by a very stern English professor or a set of professors at the Missouri Supreme Court where they said if you had just said that it must be either owned or operated and St. Francis Medical Center was in fact exempt from all of the categories of discrimination that the man of witness talked about. That's been the protection for religious organizations from the beginning. You're not changing that. The executive branch passed the regulation that said we're going to be tougher than that. You have to be 100% owned by a nonprofit. The nonprofit corporation has to be 100% owned by a religious organization. Well, everyone got it wrong except the Missouri Supreme Court. And people in my local Baptist church, if they were asked who owns the church, and they said, well, think about that. God owns it. Does the preacher own it? Do we as members own it? And I said, no, nobody owns it. They'd say, are you kidding me? What are you smoking? But that's the prior bill, of course. We were all thinking that. Yeah, exactly right. This is a hyper-technical correction by the Missouri Supreme Court Act in his English teaching. And they're saying you need to change that word to or, and that could fix this measure. But then the regulators and the executive branch would continue to promote regulations as what they think it ought to mean in order to try to narrow the scope. But this is a legislative decision by the elected representatives of the people of Missouri who have always said, not because they think it's a good idea, let's protect religion from government interference. It's because the Constitution commands it. And the chairman asked a good question. Why didn't the Supreme Court just say, you know, the statute wasn't clear enough about what gives this uh, Christian hospital protection? The Constitution should have protected, but they didn't go there. They gutted the religious liberty protections of charitable organizations by saying you should have said or instead of and. 
And so uh, Senator Schaefer has wisely gone beyond the detail required by the English professor and has proposed some language that will prevent further litigation and further confusion by the courts in the future. Uh, and we certainly fully support on behalf of the Missouri Baptist Convention, as uh, Don Hinkle mentioned, uh, this correction of your essay exam, which we think was right in the first place, but correct for the prop, and you should be given that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was going to mention this earlier, but since you brought up the bar exam, I'll take this opportunity to thank Professor Espec for doing such a great job in my bar review, getting me geared up for the constitutional law section. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, next in opposition. Next in opposition. Anyone else to testify against the bill? Next in favor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senators, for the record, Abram Mess with Missouri Family Network, put him on record and support the legislation. The only thing that I would add to all the excellent testimony that we've had previously, the Senators, you have an opportunity to answer the question. Very simple question. Are we or are we not going to protect religious expression in our state? Good questions. Thank you. Anyone else to testify in support? Okay. That will close the hearing on Senate Bill 96. Thank you. Thank you. Um, was not planning to accept today on anything. Okay. Um, possibly we will have an exec session later in the week. Um, but I think we're going to do that today. So I will take a motion to adjourn. So